<laughs> Can you go any further down? <laughs> Yo um, guys, welcome to another Q&A. Uh, another Q&A. We put a video up the other day asking some questions and you all, you all, got, you all got some questions. You got a lot of you all questions. Got some questions. We, we've picked out a few, so we're not going to do every single one, I'm afraid, this yeah. time because, like I said, trying to keep it short and sweet this time. And there's a few like duplicates, so if you don't read out yeah. your specific question, it doesn't mean like... Just know that we did it, read it. We did read it. And we read decided all. that someone else's profile picture and name looked better. Yeah. So we picked theirs to screenshot. <laughs> If you were going down the McLaren route, mm -hmm. would you rather have the higher power output and more advanced suspension in the 12C or 570S? <sighs> I'd rather have the 570S to be honest. I think we're both big fans of that car, aren't we? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. For I'd... similar money, you're getting like a brand new car. Yeah, and they say it's a bit more sort of usable and a bit more sort of daily driver friendly. Not that I'd use it as a daily driver, but you know what I mean. It does. Um, like, if you've got the uh, the opportunity to get like a newer car, like a newer model, it's yeah. slightly more improved, like that. Very it's, similar. It's normally a good yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we like the 570. What would your best money slash business advice be for a 20 year old who's just leaving uni? What's going to see a car one day? Um, I guess if we're talking like basic fundamental advice, yeah. the basic thing I would say is don't think you're going to get like rich making a just doing a nine to five job. Like, you've got to start your own business, really. Like, yes, you can climb up the ranks through a company and eventually end up as, like, the CEO or something and be, like, a millionaire, but it's pretty damn unlikely, and it takes a long time. Like, I think you've got a much better chance of doing well for yourself. Maybe not millionaire or whatever, but just doing well enough to be able to afford a, a nice car that you want if you start your own business. Not that it's that easy to just say, oh, no, start your no. own business and make money, but... But in terms of percentages of uh, yeah. people earning over, like, average wage... Yeah, it's going to be with so many more. People. Yeah. Yeah. In, in terms of basic money advice as well for young people, mm -hmm. avoid lines of credit, avoid credit cards, yeah. avoid financing stuff. Just when you're really young, yeah. especially. There's no point in financing, like, a car that you can't quite afford like when you're like 18 it's, and it's then still be it. paying for it in like because yeah. by the time you're 21 you probably won't even still want that car and you've probably you're sold it by now or whatever yeah. and you're still paying for it and it's just like avoid it just yeah. live within your means until you're like 25 and then you can start to like branch out because you just you just you make silly decisions when you're young yeah so it's, are you considering buying a new motorbike no not really not really I, I just like they're great fun but I just, I'm just kind of over it now I think like I think because we've got this because this is so fast I think yeah. that kind of satisfies the, the urge for just crazy speed that you get from a motorbike. But this ties into his last question, mm -hmm. which is, do you ever get bored of the acceleration factor from like, the R8 or motorbikes? Mm, not bored, really, no. Like, it's still fun. Like, when I go out in this and just have a blast, like, especially the first few times, like, once everything's up to temperature, the first time you floor it in, like, third gear or something, it's still a bit mental. And you're still just like, I can't believe this is that fast. Um, but yeah, so not not bored. Like it's, and like I did in the video, the 700 brake video. Like it's useful. Like you can use it most of the time. So yeah, it comes yeah. in handy. I don't, I don't really get bored of it. But you do get used to it. So no, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But like any car, any yeah. car you get, you always want a bit more power after a while. Yeah. You just get it doesn't matter if you had a Vayron or whatever. You'd still be like, yeah, you know, in sixth gear sometimes I just wanted to pull a bit harder. Yeah, like you just, you just get used so, to it. So so yeah, not bored of it, but you do get used to it a bit. Is this time for the onslaught of M2 questions? A lot of people <laughs> have asked a lot. what he specifically thinks of the M2. I think we're both weighing on this. Yeah. Um, first of all, I'll just say, because the most common question is, are you thinking of upgrading the 235 to an M2? Not really, no. Because <laughs> uh, we're going to get loads of hate again, aren't we? Brace yourself, Never people. Never insult an M car. People, people don't like it. Um, no, I'm sure the M2 will be a great car on its own, but compared to the 235, again, like we said with the M4, I don't think it warrants the extra money. I mean, it's... It's a little bit lighter, I think it's 30 kilograms lighter, which isn't a massive amount, but yeah, it's 30 kilograms lighter. Um, and it's got about 40 brake horsepower more and about 10 foot pounds or pound foot of torque more. Yeah. Which again, they're only the peak figures, so maybe I don't tell the, the real story, but it doesn't sound like that much of an upgrade over the 235 to warrant like an extra 10 or 11 grand. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I think in your case, the 235 is a daily driver. That's what I was going to go onto, yeah. Like, it doesn't make sense for me to upgrade to a sort of slightly more hardcore, slightly faster car for my sensible daily driver. Like, the 235 is already more than enough for a daily driver. So, yeah, I'm, I'm not thinking about upgrading to it. I'm sure there'll be a great car, like, like I said, standalone. But compared to the 235, 
But if the 235 was your only car you had? Yeah, then I'd upgrade because then, yeah, you get. It, I'm sure it'll be a better car than the 235. Um, and we were saying as well, they, they can't make it that good, can they? Because it'll fall into the M4 Yeah, it comes on to a bigger issue. That we've yeah. kind of spoke about before, because you know, manufacturers just, just added so many different variations. Yeah. So, like, the gap between, the gap, the, like, they've not got much room before it starts encroaching on the M4, no. so they can't do that much. No, they can, it's already, like, accelerates pretty much as fast as an M4, I think, the M2. Yeah, um, so they can't make it any faster, because then, then it's like, well, who's going to buy an M4 when you can buy an M2? Yeah. Like, well, it's going to be a company. I, like, yeah. I love the look of it. I think it looks yeah. ace. I'd probably get an M, a 1M. Yeah. Still, yeah. Over the, the M2. This, this was one thing. more aggressive. Yeah, this is one thing we were saying. The 1M came out, what, three, four years ago? And yet the, the new M2 is basically just the same in terms of performance. In fact, I think it's got less torque. Like, <laughs> that's the, I, I feel like that's really weird that they've released a very similar looking car, like four years later. It does just basically the same or a little bit worse in some areas. Yeah. I, I, I kind of. Although the M2 gearbox is probably going to be great. Yeah, yeah, that'll be good. But I just, I think yeah, I still have a one M. Still, still got some reservations about it. Yeah, yeah. One of these days, BMW is going to make a good car. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's going to get us shot down. Jesus Christ! Uh, he said other, it. He other said than it. The two, three, five. <laughs> and the M4. Let's not forget the M4. Everyone loves the M4. And the M2. And the X. And the M5. Eight point one. And the 118D. And the. Let's 2. move on. <laughs> Would you buy a Citroen C1? Oh, absolutely. I've, I've, like, I've heard so many good things about them. Dude. Mainly like, from the guy that asked You'd have question. to stop me buying a seat. You're training the bathroom for one next week, aren't you? Because I've heard it like Dragon R8. I reckon it's so. It's lighter, isn't it? It's, it's got to be lighter. Yeah. It's got is it better than M4? It's better. What isn't? <laughs> what is <laughs> uh, what camera mount do you use on the GTA 6? It looks like it comes from the headrest. Yeah, it's, um, I think the website is headrestmount.co.uk. Yeah, no, I just looked around for a headrest mount because a lot of track days are funny about using suction mounts and in this it's fine because we've got that bit of glass that I can stick a proper sticker on um, but the 86 doesn't have that. But it, so. uh, it clamps onto the, the post, you know, the headrest yeah. posts. So like this, you can't do it. No, you can't use this. you can't do it. Has that not got posts. a post either? No, that's oh, all right. Yeah, that, that is the problem. It's only for cars that have got my like, headrest posts. Luckily, the 86 has, so I got one of them. It was quite expensive, I think, for what it is, but it looked a lot more reliable and better than all the random eBay ones that people just made in the back garden. So. I know one of our friends used to have a, a tripod in the back oh, yeah. with bungee cords, like <laughs> connecting it back in the old days with like a camcorder that had tape in it for you youngsters. Oh, VHS style. And then it like, it wobbled a little bit around corners because like the bungee straps. <laughs> I bet that's a good effect though. You got like the, the G-force. Yeah, you got a bit of lean. Yeah. You got a bit of lean yeah. on. So yeah, <laughs> think yourselves lucky that people do like shock, um, suction mounts. Right? Yeah, but you can't use them at most race tracks. Kind of sucks. What did you buy first? A nice car or your property? Uh, house. Which we, we, went people to buy first? We, we've always said, don't we? Buy a house first. Buy a house. Like, don't, don't be living at your mum's with a, with a Ferrari. It's, it's not cool. <laughs> yeah, I just think, as tempting as it is, and again, I nearly bought a V8 R8 before I bought a house. I, I had the house money, like the deposit saved up. I was like, ah, if I could just spend this on an R8 that I've always wanted. And yeah, eventually I kind of realised, no, let's just be sensible. Like, it, um, it just, yeah. again, it's one of them, like, decisions that you might make when you're younger. Yeah. We just buy, like, just get a house, just get a decent, like, down payment yeah. done. You'll be pleased later and, on. When yeah. You do, yeah, and then, because then by the time you're like 40 and it's just like paid off, yeah. like, it's just done. Like, yeah. I know it's not very really exciting getting a house, no, but it's, so, it's, so like, cold, it's nowhere but. near as exciting as buying a car, but. But after you've got one, you'd be like, God, there's no way I could have carried on living at my parents' or whatever. Like, it's, it's so much nicer having your kind of independence. So, yeah. Yeah. like, yeah, I think as boring as it is, get a house first. Do you plan on doing another Christmas paper wrap this year? No, we're still finding tape from the last one. Like, yeah, no joke. It was, um... Nearly a year later, I'm still, every time I wash it, I still find a little bit of sellotape somewhere. So, yeah, I don't think so. It took a while. It took, it took ages a long to time, do. Didn't it? Yeah. it was fun enough, but. Uh, like we drove it around a little bit and no one, no, no. one cared. <laughs> no, nobody noticed at all. So, um, so yeah, well, we might think that something, some special Christmassy video. We'll try, yeah, maybe. but I've not got anything in I've mind. Got any ideas, really. No, I, I come up with like I don't want to do something shit just for the sake of a Christmas special kind of thing. So yeah. like, if we've got a good idea, we'll do it. If not, then no. Have you done any driving experiences? Not track, not like track days. Like yeah, well, driving. I don't know if it means like, like say like a rally day or something. I haven't personally. You like you said, I did the Ferrari, Ferrari day, which, which, uh, it's like hundred and 
some are quid. They're expensive, probably. aren't they? Yeah. And literally, you get like three laps. And if you, if you look, you get like three or four laps. Um, it's kind of cool just for the fact that you're driving one, but it's over so quickly, you're like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> and, and I don't know about on yours, but the one that I got for Nicole, like, you couldn't, they wouldn't let you go above, like, 4,000 RPM yeah. or whatever. They, yeah, they You really... think, you, they sell it as, like, experience the thrill of driving a Ferrari or whatever, but you don't actually get to go very fast. You just literally drive around slowly in a Ferrari. You don't get to, like, rag it around. It's, so, yeah. The, the, and for the most part, apart from, like, the sound... And it, like it kind of is like driving another car. Like, yeah, because you're not going fast. It's so. better to just be like out in a passenger seat half the time of someone who's like going used fast. to driving their car, and because you get to experience it and hear it. The actual driving bit, it's it's like it'd be much better when it's yours when you finally bought one and you get to drive one. That feels amazing. But yeah, I like, get three laps around the track. Yeah. It's okay. You may as well save the money towards an actual Ferrari for yourself. Yeah. Like, I know 150 yeah. quid ain't gonna make yeah. much difference, but if you did a few of them. This guy asks, have you ever crashed? Not including track days. Uh, no, not not including track days, thankfully, because my insurance would be a fucking fortune if Ooh, I'd ever crashed. You have you ever crashed? Never. No. 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 no, sensible drivers here, yeah, you see? Yeah, see? Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so let's say you've passed your test a couple of years ago, built up some no claims bonuses. Uh, what would your first performance car be? I don't know. It obviously depends on budget a lot. Um, yeah, it's, oh, it's a yeah. 12C. Yeah. <gasps> Hi. <laughs> That's random as fuck. <laughs> Wait, I snapped it. Did you get it? Papped. Just. That was, some, that was some quick reactions there. Why the fuck? I've, I've never seen a 12C around here. Oh, once. That was ace. Follow it. Right, we lost the 12C, so let's carry on with the Q&A. <laughs> Future cars, like real gold, nothing stupid. Nothing stupid? Well, that's all the cars out then. 570S again, or 458. I think they're, I think they're the only two really that, like, realistically, I'd, I want to have like within the next few years. Like, not both, one, not one both. or the other. No, not green. Not I mean, I'm thinking like, like Cinque, maybe Huayra. <laughs> Zonda. Yeah. Nothing stupid. Just chill. <laughs> um, so chill. <laughs> this actually ties into to our mate Phil asked uh, if I'll get rid of the Abarth anytime soon. I'm swapping cars. I'm like, uh, buying new cars. Yeah. Um, if right. I was to replace it with Just anything, it I'd replace it with another bath. Nah, what? That's such I, a shit answer. I do. I Come love on. it so much. With that exhaust on, and I'm just like, I just want, exhaust I'm good. looking like five nine five in black. The new seats, black yeah. on black stitching. I can leather. see that. I can see that. After mashing the GT86, has it felt right again? <laughs> do you get it in the feeling you have abused it, and it never going to treat you the same? Um, a little bit. Every time I drive it now, I'm a little bit wary. I'm like, does that It'll feel normal? Yeah, <laughs> I am a little bit because I've still only probably driven it like three or four times since the since all the repairs were finished. So I'm a little bit wary still at the moment. But I think that's a good thing. You don't want to go too crazy straight away. Is there any hot hatch that really appeals to you as a potential buyer? A bath. I'm definitely <laughs> in a bath. Definitely. That's your answer. Isn't definitely it? in a bath. Come on, some other hot hatch other than a bath. If you had to have a hot hatch that wasn't in a bath. I kind of like the Clio's. The new ones, 200, yeah. 200. The, the new ones or the old ones? The new ones. Yeah, I like yeah. the look of them. I, I think, think they're okay. I was going to go, similar idea is like an Ibiza Cupra. Like the smaller... Because, yeah. I don't know, they're, just, they're a bit more nimble and I think a lot of them look better as well. I like the... I really I like, like the look of the Clio's. Do a spotty it? KA Ford? I don't think so. Why would you want one? Because it's tiny. It's ace. It's like, it's like, it's like the Florida Yeesh. bath. It's the the, the Florida bath. With this huge turbo <laughs> with some, some spoilers on it. I don't know. Dude, but. don't buy an M2. Get oh, get on the Audi RS1 Quattro, S1 Quattro. Oh, the yeah, limited they, edition. Yeah. Like 40 grand. They're ace. Get one of them. They only made like yeah, 10 of them, didn't they? I was yeah. being stupid. Someone, they do this. Some on Auto Trade, 38 grand. Is it really? 38 grand I'd have for one of them. one. I'd have one of them. When I'm a millionaire, sure. I'll have one. Just for the oh, holes. Amazing. Next question. Next question. Are you going to keep doing IT software and what are your business plans for the future? Um, that's quite a good question, actually. Good I've question. kind of always thought that the IT software is not going to last forever. So recently I've started trying to invest in property, which I don't know how it's going yet because we've only just bought a house and going to try and rent it out. So we'll see how well it goes. I've not bought it outright. That makes it sound like I'm a baller. Just like, yeah. Just, <laughs> just bought, just just bought a couple that of houses, you know? G's. Yeah, just, no, no. I've got, like, the minimum amount on a mortgage, and then I'm just going to rent it out, and that'll cover the mortgage and hopefully make a bit of money as well. And then hopefully the house will go up in price over time. 
So I don't know, I don't know how that's going to go. Take but... note, kids, is like when you're young, you plant the seed. Yeah. You just plant the seed. Plant the seed and then hopefully than, later on yeah, it'll work out. Yeah, you're balling, like buying an R8 or something. <laughs> <laughs> just plant the seed. That's what I'm saying. Plant the but seed yeah, in like, the future. Like I, was, I was seriously considering just spending all the money I had saved up and trading this in to get a 570 or something. Um, but I was like, you know what, I'll, for once I'll be sensible and invest in the, in the future rather than just going, oh, I want a nicer car now. Yeah. I'll, I'll invest in the future. So that's that, all it takes. Just a little bit. Just think of the future. Plan our seed. Just a little bit. Just a house deposit. Yeah. <laughs> just. That, yeah. I think that's the most important thing. Is um, is like it's just trying to future proof. Yeah. Your income. And it's then. it's hard to do because you think oh everything's going fine now it will always go fine but it won't like it's gonna stop at some point so. You've got it, and that's the best thing about being self-employed is like you can adapt and you. Yeah, can, you can decide you that. You can yeah. see like. If you work the, a job, someone just comes in one day and said, like, you're fired, that's it. You're, or you've got done. a pay cut, or, or if you're just yeah. hoping for a pay rise sometime in the future that might come. never come. Yeah. At least when you're self-employed, it's down to you, and if you notice trends of sales dropping off, like, you, you, you can do something about it. Yep. Um, just keep your eyes open. And yeah, so future business plans, it's just, it's just like, keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, but also try and make sort of backup and, strategies as yeah, well if you can, yeah. Try and, try and future-proof it best you can. Yeah. Seemingly having enough money to live in a big city like London, which... Don't. <laughs> um, why do people prefer to live in the country like we do? We don't live in the country, I don't think. Mm, we just live up north. Yeah, like we don't. Yeah, we don't live down in the big cities of London. But if I lived in London, making the amount of money I do, I wouldn't have this car. I wouldn't have any of the cars I have. I wouldn't have a house that's as nice as it is. Not this like a mansion, right? But I would have a shitty like one bedroom apartment if I lived in London. That's how different the house prices and the prices of everything are up here. And like, because of like what you do it's not you don't have, you're not like geographically bound no so why not live up here have like a bigger house with a garden you yeah. know, like a garden is a luxury in london if you were to wake up one morning and see that you had lost all your wealth how would you plan to get it back and what would your strategy be that's a tricky one um i'd say i'd say you just you just start again you just do what you do like well that's what i was gonna say we're we saying you're allowed to just then start the same business again presumably not no, but because when you're self-employed, like, like it's just you, you, it's just a hustle. So like, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. matter what your business you're doing. You're just constantly like hustling your way and just trying stuff and trying new things and things don't work. And like, like it's like a just it's constant. So yeah, just, I think you just carry on, but in a different industry or whatever. It's hard to say exactly what I would do personally. Um, I think it still have to be something based around IT because that's what all my sort of career and knowledge is based around. If, yeah. if you're saying I can't do the exact same thing, I'd find some other area of IT to sort of start my own business in, I guess. But What would you recommend as your first car? Again... Something shit. So just, something shit that you can get... It's supposed to be shit. Yeah, just it's learning it. Terrible. Yeah. I know you want the best car possible when you start, but just get something cheap, cheap to insure. You're probably going to have some kind of accident in it. Like, just... just, just get something and just learn the first two years of driving you don't really have a clue what you're doing um and and also just... i'd say if you uh, if you want to like modify it or change it do not spend more than 10 percent of the value on the car yeah don't go like, through it because you're gonna a thousand quid don't spend 100 pound on like speakers and yeah because you're not going to keep it that long your first car and you're going to get bored of it pretty quickly and you're going to want something better and you're going to as you're getting older you're getting paid more so you're going to be able to afford something better like just yeah, I you'll don't, never get don't, money back, and you're, you're just no. I don't go crazy with your first car, as, as tempting as it is, because you're like wow, I've got a car, I can do stuff to it. Just <laughs> just keep it stock. Think about the retail value, I guess, which is something I don't normally do. But like, yeah, for your first car, just just, just accept yeah, that it's going to be a learning right. tool. Yeah. <laughs> Could you upload some mountain bike slash road bike related content? You put quite a bit on Snapchat, don't you? Yeah, if you follow me on but, Snapchat, you'll know. Let's get on that bike. Um, in terms of, I'd, I'd I like to, because I'd like to just do one video was like why I love cycling so much to mm-hmm. like get it out there. But I don't know if it fit on this channel, though, would it? Like, and it won't. Be, I don't know. And it'd just be a lot of like wind noise. And, yeah. And I, I don't know how to really. I think. I think the problem is like most people who watch this channel might not be into biking at all. So if we just suddenly put up a here's biking, people will be like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Like, I don't know. Uh, maybe some maybe we'll do put a bit in an extras video or something sometime soon something like that. I don't know. Uh, what do you and Sai think of other car YouTubers? They're all shit. Terrible. <laughs> no. Terrible. I think we'll try. We'll, instead of offending people, we'll just talk about the ones that we like. That's probably a better way of doing it than say this guy's shit. This guy's <laughs> shit. Um, like, like we all love cars. We all like put, make YouTube videos. Like. Yeah, we're all in the same boat, I guess. Yeah, like it's all, it's all cool. Like whatever. Like we've we only met. 
like one or two. So we can't. We don't have opinions that people. Not no, we don't. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, it's a bit harsh forming opinions based on people's videos. But like, I don't know people that I like. Um, Rob Darm, nice down to earth guy. Um, seen through goggles. Seen through goggles. Both a big fan of his. Seen yeah. through glasses. It's the proper name. Um, <laughs> do you know any others that that I really like and that I watch regularly? The only ones I can think of are like proper car magazines and stuff, rather than individual people. Um, yeah. I guess the only, oh, Doctor M3 has some cool videos as well. Sweet stuff. Um, dude in, that dude in blue dude seems in blue. seems cool. Basically, if you're on YouTube and you're making car videos, you're just cool. Like, and apart I, from us. Apart from us. <laughs> we're trying. Yeah. Uh, what happened to the paint in the boot with the MG5i? <laughs> um, does he mean like what caused it? Oh, yeah, most um, people won't have a clue what we're on. I about. Snapchatted because he spilled a tin of paint. A big tin. In the boot of the 235i. Like, oh. the full lot. I mentioned that I, was, I bought this house that I'm going to rent out, so I've been going around to paint it and decorate it. So I got a massive tin of paint, like a big three and a half litre tin of them in, put it in the boot, drove to the new house. Like a douche. Opened the boot. <laughs> I didn't drive like a douche, I might have done. Opened the boot and I'm like, I don't remember anything big and white and flat that I put, oh wait, that's paint. Like the entire boot. And it was like this thick, wasn't it? We were literally scooping it out with like lids like, and stuff. Like yeah. so much paint. So the boot liner is all wrecked. So. Got to get a new boot liner, which from BMW is 120 quid, I think, for the flat bit and the bit of the side that got wrecked. So I've had to stump that up. And um, yeah, that, that's the story with the paint. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, follow me on Snapchat. <laughs> yeah, dedication <laughs> side on Snapchat. How do you stay positive, programming is stressful? I know. But how do you, I did a total wrong inflection on all of that, didn't I? Yeah, what, what's Terrible. going on there? I know. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's got a height, it's like a dash. I, I know. know. The program is stressful. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Say, it's not a drama class. Just read the question. Um, programming is stressful. How do you stay I know. positive? <laughs> I know. Right, programming. The question was, we just for some reason started laughing at it. <laughs> not the question. Right, let's talk. It was my inflection on reading the question. Yeah. My amazing acting skills. Terrible acting skills. I should be on the stage. You should be on some kind of stage. <laughs> <laughs> how do you stay positive? Programming is stressful. But how do you not get stressed out? You seem really chill. You still got weird inflection on that, I'm but we'll let, we'll keep that one. It. That's a keeper. I've changed it. Right? Yeah, programming can be stressful, but I think you just got to kind of persevere with it. Like, it's I don't know. It's it's quite satisfying programming. Like you've tried a bit as well, and you're like when you get something right, you're like, oh sweet, I understand that it worked how I wanted it to. It's quite sort of satisfying knowing that you've typed something in and it's made a computer do what you wanted to happen. Um, so yeah, like it's it's not that stressful I wouldn't say most of the time like it's stressful if you don't understand it's stressful learning it I would say yeah like when you're like well this makes no fucking sense how are you what um the thing once is, you get over that um, hump it's all right it's like anything do you know like when you when that like, you're reading and like your head hurts and you're like ah oh, I can't read anymore mm, like know. you gotta compare it to when you're working out like it's the burn so mm. if you're doing something and it's hurting and like hurts your head and you don't understand it like that's the moment when you, you're learning when yeah. you're doing some good like like if you were lifting weights and as soon as it hurt you put it you dropped it and said, oh, I can't do this you never, never get, get stronger yeah. so remember that next time and just push keep through. going keep yeah going. keep going so you'll be, you'll be you'll be glad you did yeah exactly like if if it's stressful now because you don't understand stuff I mean I don't know what level you're at programming when you're saying this but if it's stressful because you don't understand stuff just keep learning and learning and then it'll get less and less stressful because you'll understand what you're doing so if it's then, stressful just because you're working on something that you don't well, like I don't I don't know how it would be stressful really if you understand it all. It can be stressful trying to hunt down a bug, I guess. Like you need like, why the fuck is that happening? I've <laughs> done this, I've done this, and it still doesn't work. But again, just persevere and you'll eventually get there and then you'll be quite satisfied. Oh, I figured it out eventually. Next question. How long do you plan on keeping the GT86 for and what would you consider replacing it with? Well, as, as long as I can really. Like that I'm not planning to sell that car ever really. I mean maybe at some point, but like it's it's gonna I'm gonna lose shitloads of money on it when I sell it. Like I've spent thousands and thousands of pounds modifying it. That I'm never gonna get back. It's been crashed twice. It's yeah. I'm never gonna get any decent money back for it. So and, that, and like I always knew that was gonna be the case. So yeah, as long as I possibly can. I don't know what I'd replace it with really. Um, can you answer in detail what side does? I know he's an entrepreneur, but is there any place that it's been said in detail? Not in detail. Not in detail. Um, speaking of detail. Speaking of detail. So <laughs> I used to have a detailing business, as many will know. Um, I don't anymore. Um, I now make stickers, essentially. Um, and there's like, there is sort of a story behind that, which I think I'll go into another video. Um, yeah, of like what I've put in detail in stuff and why I don't do it anymore and blah, blah, blah. Like, so yeah, at the minute, 
I do like vinyl die cut stickers, that kind of thing, um, and don't do detailing anymore. And that's kind of like without going too far. Yeah, um, it's probably a separate video. Because it well. there is a story behind it and like some good points that I think will be helpful. Um, so yeah, it's, it's planning to be done, that video. Would you and Sai ever work together? Yeah, this is enough. This is being this My close God. for this amount of time is not. <sighs> I'm about to get out of the car right now. <laughs> um, I don't think so. I don't think we'd ever have like a real reason to it because we both do separate things. Like, there's no overlap between IT software and like, no, what you I do. Think, like, I think just... if something come along that, like you say, that required like both our separate yeah. skills, um, it'd so be kind of daft not to at least explore it. But I don't um, think it ever will really. But now I've had right. partnerships in the past and it's. Um, and it ba- just going on me, like, not control freak, but <laughs> like when I, I have an image and I like I kind of want to do it a certain way. And that's what I'm like as well. I think it'd be quite a conflict. Just, like, yeah, it's have... always. But if you have an idea, um, and you can get away without having like an outboard outside investor hmm. or an outside partner that are like diluting your vision. Yeah. If you've got a vision, you've got a vision. You got to try and make that work on your own as best you can. Yeah. Um, that's kind of advice and then on that. yeah and then like further down the line if you need to have other people then start employing people but then you're the boss if you know what I mean it's still your yeah. vision yeah. you're not got sort of 50 50 say in what happens I, I personally wouldn't like that at all but no it, 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 the camel is the horse designed by committee okay what how many cocks how many cocks <laughs> what on a daily basis lol jk jk <laughs> how many cocks at least like i can't sleep without at least six in my uh, mouth I need, I need a new bookshelf <laughs> need a new bookshelf to hold all, all your cocks, all cocks. <laughs> what do you think of the stance scene and would you ever build a stance car no just no just not. i don't get it I, I honestly don't get it at all <laughs> like the i don't even really get lowering cars like to the point where the wheels are inside the arches you're, you're on board with that aren't you but i appreciate the aesthetics of like a lower oh. car and a stance car. I, I just don't see it. I just, for, to me, like a, a car where the wheels are like flush with the wheel arch, fine. But any lower than that, where you can't see the top of the wheel, it just looks stupid to me. But and this and all the toe and camera and stuff now, nah, fuck off. It gets a bit. We yeah. we come. We like racing. We like driving. Yeah, like, like it, and it just ruins handling. <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. Like you're doing. Okay. It, to me, like any modification you do to a car, pretty much should be to make it handle or drive better. And I know, like I've done aesthetic modifications to the 86 as well, but. Like changing lights or changing the colour or whatever, they're fairly standard. But like going to the lengths of making it drive worse just so that it looks better. Well, that, that's admirable. It's like they're so dedicated to the yeah. looks that like they'll sacrifice that. Yeah, like yeah, weight distribution and, and handling. And but then I've seen a good a good quote, which is that a show car will never be as good as a race car. Not no, a show car will never be good as as a race car, but a race car will always be good as a show car. Like race cars always look cool. You know what I mean? Like a. Yeah, that's true. Like some awesome GT3 car, whatever, always looks good. But yeah, it's also amazing on the track. But that's because the GT3 car cost several million and a standard MX-5 cost a couple of grand. Yeah. That was going to look cool. Yeah, it swings around, that's... What was your first car? I think we've done this before, but this mine was a Rover 25, a 1.4 piece of shit. Um, mine was a 1.2 Mark II Punto. Good cars. Yes. <laughs> Can you fit in the front of the R8? We're gonna, we're gonna find out, aren't we? We're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Cut, cut to a clip. Let's <laughs> find it out, dude. You can fit in there. Go on, then. You're up. Easy. You do this. You do <laughs> this. And then. <laughs> Hold on. Can I get a full here? No, th- that's not happening. There's no way you. I'm fit. basically in. You're not. If I'm I close ba- that, I'm in. I'm in. It's gonna watch, crush you. Just watch my head. I'm in. <laughs> Your head's fine, but. Look, I'm in. Look. It won't even close. That's fine. <laughs> can you go any further down? <laughs> Ah. Is that your head that I was pressing yeah. on? <laughs> I thought it was your back. I crashed it. Sorry. Mate. <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. Ah. I reckon it is. See? Ah. Yeah, see? Ah. That's see. why, because there's a big intercooler there. Right, yeah, because then that would go way further Lower. down normally. I thought I'd seen someone getting one of these before. I thought when I opened that, I was like, there's no way you can be in there. So there we go. No, we can't because race car. Because I'd rather have 700 brake than fit someone in the. <laughs> and that concludes that, that the uh, stupid ending. The stupid ending of Q and A. Yeah. So hope you enjoyed. We're probably going to edit quite a lot of this down because it's been like 45 minutes again. No one wants to watch that. This always happens. <laughs> we're like, this one's going to be under 15 minutes, and then never. 
So we'll probably have to cut a few questions out. So sorry if yours didn't make it. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, sweet. And uh, so yeah, see you in the next time. video.